Fantasia Land is one of the most incredible theme parks in the world, immersively themed with attention to detail paid wherever you look. Roller coasters that become an experience unto themselves and an environment that feels like walking into an ecosystem rather than an amusement park. And in this bite-sized theme park review, I'm going to explain why. I'm Paul from Loop Theme Park Adventures and this is my review of Fantasia Land in Brühl, Germany. First off, let's get this straight, Fantasia Land is not a large park. It's not blessed with the space of an Efteling or a Europa Park, but it's how they use the space which is so impressive. The theming is everywhere, not just in the rides and buildings, but in how the staff are dressed and the way they interact with guests, and in how the park feels. It is, like I said in the intro, like its own ecosystem that happens to have a bunch of amusement rides, rather than a bunch of rides that are themed to fit a certain style. It's a hard thing to explain over video, but if you visit yourself you'll know what I mean. The creative use of space means you'll find themed areas directly backing onto each other without you even realising. Certain sections of the park are layered on top of others and the main themed lands are all primarily hidden from view until you get the big reveal. The underpass entrance to Rookberg being a perfect example or the walk across the bridge which reveals Klugheim on one side and Mexico on the other. In terms of rides, there are the obvious standouts. Fly dominates the steampunk area of Rookberg, weaving in and out of tunnels and theming pieces. This is a new generation Vekoma flying coaster and it's a really unique and long experience, as well as being a technical marvel. The station is underground, queue line is above ground, taking you all around the sides of Rookberg, presenting you with glimpses of Fly to build your anticipation. Taran is another highly immersive and well-loved attraction. This intimate multi-launch coaster set the world alight when it opened, with many considering it to be the best themed roller coaster in the world. The mess of tracks sending riders through the medieval city of Klugheim. And while the ride experience is a lot of fun, to me Taran is a sign of what Intamin were capable of rather than their peak. And riding Taran for the first time, having already ridden the likes of Velocicoaster and Gotham City Escape, did feel a little underwhelming, but that doesn't detract from a fantastically immersive experience from a coaster that paved the way for what was to follow and Taran gets mad respect for that. The third of the big thrill coasters Fantasialand has to offer is Black Mamba, a B&M inverted coaster which bears a lot of similarities to Nemesis at Alton Towers, with a unique layout and lots of sweeping around rock work and in and out of tunnels. Another very well themed coaster which has some decent moments of intensity. Away from the coasters there's also Chapas, one of the best and slightly craziest themed log flumes you'll find, which even includes a Mexican rave sequence. And like all things at Fantasyland, they make a spectacle of the drop. Also in Mexico, you'll find Talacan, a Hus topspin which acts more as a show than a ride, featuring music, fire and water during its ride cycle. The mad thing about Talacan is that it looks amazing, but it isn't really in an area of the park that you'd walk through unless you're looking for Talacan. Fantasyland is a park where everything gets heavily themed, regardless of footfall. Mouse Al Chocolat is a trackless shooting dark ride which is pretty good fun, and Mystery Castle may be one of the best drop tower attractions you'll ever find. There are of course many family coasters to enjoy, including the two Winger's spinning coasters in the indoor section of the park and the Colorado Mine Train. There's Rapids, a carousel and many other theme park staples. Honestly, so much is crammed into this relatively small space, yet nothing feels really cramped. It's genuinely impressive how much thought has gone into the layout of Fantasialand. I thought operations were only okay, certainly not terrible, but there are opportunities to improve, especially as many queue times were overstated. For example, Black Mamba was advertised at 25 minutes when it was actually 40, and Taran had a 40 minute line which ended up being over an hour, so just be mindful of that. It was also very chaotic getting out of the car park at the end. It probably took over an hour, so that's something that could be improved upon too. Let me know if you've had similar experiences or if I just got unlucky. Food options at the park are plentiful. I opted to try Urwerk for some lunch to get some unique views of Fly, and while the food was decent, the service was very slow and took quite a chunk of time out of my day. So if you're on a limited time frame, maybe grab a quick bite instead of a sit down meal. I also found the merchandise offering to be surprisingly limited considering the excellent branding of the main attractions and themed areas. Feels like they're leaving money on the table there. Ticket prices vary depending on the time of year, but you can expect to pay around 50 euros if you visit during the main season. So overall, Fantasyland is a simply stunning theme park with some wonderful attractions. Without question, one of my favourites in Europe and probably the park I'm most desperate to revisit for a longer stay so I can really immerse myself in the experience. If you could give the video a thumbs up, that really helps so much and let me know your thoughts on Fantasyland down in the comments. There are reviews for some other awesome theme parks up on the screen now which are definitely worth checking out. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.